This guy here will typically get open right up the seam. Even if I set my zone drops, it's not gonna change that. Only this time, the seam flat man matched that seam and nothing's open. So if I go all the way to zero, which is something that a lot of people do, you're gonna see how that cornerback is not gonna be able to cover that. And now you're gonna see that it doesn't matter. Even if I take this route all the way to zero, this cornerback is gonna cover that. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable muck coins, check out my sponsor at MOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Madden cheese as always. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys my best coaching adjustments used on offense and defense in Madden 25. I know a lot of people have been asking about this video in my comment section, so I want to get it out as soon as possible. But before I do, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber to the like button in the comment section. And if you need more help or more money plays on offense or defense, you can download Download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top pin comment. Now, I'm going to start off on offense, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because nothing's really changed here with the exception of the tempo adjustment, which is now here. You used to have to push in the left or the right stick. I don't remember how, but you used to have to access it from the previous menu. Now, you can set the chew clock or no huddle or normal, which is going to be the one you use the most of the game anyway. But yeah, I mean, no huddle and uh, chew clock is pretty situational. I don't think that's something that you're necessarily going to want to do throughout the entire game. But if you're down, obviously, you're going to want to go no huddle. If you're up, you might want to go chew clock. Uh, but after that, deep pass catching interview immediate pass catching it doesn't make a lot of sense to preset these and that's because on any given play if i set it to a uh, deep pass catching rack yeah it's a benefit obviously rack catching gives you the opportunity to make a, a smaller play into a bigger play uh, with a catch and run but if somebody's bearing down on you if there's a safety in the area or somebody in the area there's a higher chance of you not catching the ball so all these things are going to be best to do in the middle of the play you're going to decide based off of you know what you're seeing on the field in that moment rather than presetting it if you don't know if you want to do a rack catch it's x or square if you want to do a safe catch it's a or x whether you're on xbox or playstation and if you want to do an aggressive catch it's y or triangle blocking is useless i don't know why this is still in the game if you set this to conservative you're not going to hold the blocks as long which obviously why would you want that and if you set it to aggressive you're going to get a bunch of penalties so it makes no sense the one that does make sense though is ball carrier this is the only one on offense that i use uh, basically i run balanced throughout the entire game but if you want to run with the quarterback say you're running a lot of read options or you're running a lot of uh, unique quarterback runs quarterbacks fumble a lot even if you're scrambling with the quarterback whatever this is an opportunity to turn fumbling off typically uh, when you're running with the quarterback you're pro program to fumble more it's just part of the game they don't put the ball away slight hits can knock the ball out but if you turn this to conservative it basically turns fumbling off for the most part uh, it's not 100% I mean it can still happen but it significantly reduces it so if you're up late in the game also and you don't want to turn the ball over or your opponent's doing a lot of strip tackles uh, you might want to go to conservative but just remember that this turns off your ball carrier moves so basically you're not going to be able to do a lot of jukes or anything like that it just basically turns into a very safe runner likewise another situational thing if you're down and you're trying to make a big play if you got to score a touchdown fast you want to you know turn your chances of breaking tackles up put your ball care and aggressive once again you could fumble more but i've done tests on this and you don't really fumble that much more especially if you're running with a running back when it comes to defense this is very different this is one of the things that i'm going to try to set the second the game starts for the first one here auto flip defensive play call i typically turn that off and there's a reason for that. When you're blitzing, you can get way more, and I pretty much blitz every play, but you get way more out of blitzes if you can control what side of the blitz you're sending the play. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. I already put out a full breakdown of a defense, uh, the SS Blitz 3, a cornerback blitz is one of my favorite blitzes. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip the play there. This is not necessarily something that I always do, but I noticed that if you're running the blitz on the opposite side of, say, a shotgun look, if you're setting this opposite the running back, it can benefit you in multiple ways. Number one, it could benefit you if it's a run play. A lot of times he'll get around because the run has to go in the direction. He has to go towards the quarterback to get the handoff. So obviously, if he's going in that direction, a lot of times the blitz can come right in and cut off the direction that he's going, which is a huge benefit. But I also find that if if it's an actual blitz like this a lot of times the the running back just won't pick it up like right there that was a play action and he actually did take that although if i would have guessed pass he probably would have ran right around that which i did not do because when you guess pass although i might have just messed that up when you guess pass they don't bite on the play action so there it looks like he bit on the play action but you can see what i'm talking about as far as being a benefit on a run play but you can see right here it looks like they changed the blocking structure entirely as we get an interception uh which isn't really what i'm going for here so we're going to do that one more time like I said, I just want to see if I can get the look that I'm trying to get here. 
where this guy, a lot of times, well, like I said, he'll just come right around. The running back can't pick it up. I finally get that look. So I turn my auto flip off because there's a lot of blitzes that I use that are like that, where I really want to try to control where the blitzer's coming from. When it comes to auto alignment, I like to do base. I run a lot of zone coverage, but if you run a lot of man coverage, you're going to want to leave it to default. And this year you have the ability to, uh, to change the... Um, you know, your coverage shell anyway. So this is something where you could decide to go with that. Although not every defense gives you a huge number of options when it comes to coverage shells. Some only give you like one or two where some give you, uh, you know, more than that. But obviously if you're running a lot of man coverages, like I said, like a cover zero, especially, this is not good, a good look for cover zero. If I wanted to take this off, I really can't change that. But you typically, you typically want to run these man coverages uh, to their strength. A cover zero would look something like this where they're a lot closer. Because if you start this play with these guys so far away in a man coverage, I could throw it to that tight end within the first couple of yards and I'm going to get that play every single time. Same thing with the receiver outside. He's too far outside. He's giving up way too much inside leverage. So if this receiver that, that slays covering just runs any kind of crossing route, he's going to get wide open because he's got so much inside leverage. Same thing with this guy over here, Bradbury. If, if uh, I'm guessing that's CD Lamb. If he runs a crossing route away from the cornerback with all that inside leverage, he's going to get open every single time. If you're mixing a lot of man coverage and zone coverage, stay in default. And then maybe every once in a while, mix in your coverage shell system uh, to try to confuse your opponent. But don't just set this to straight up base if you're using a lot of man coverage. And I know a lot of people are, especially when it comes to man zero blitz. So if you're a man user or you use man half the time, I can't stress this enough, stay with default. Otherwise, if you use all zone coverages like I do for the most part, set it to base. Next up, I'm going to go over cornerback matchups. This is another one where if you're running a mix of man and zone, I find it doesn't really matter and I pretty much want to stay unbalanced. And I find that sometimes when I use uh, one of these settings by overall, by speed or by height, and uh, my opponent flips the play, even if I'm in a zone coverage, a lot of times the entire zone will try to flip to match so that the same receiver, or the same cornerbacks are covering their same receivers. And then a lot of times my opponent can quick hike me before they get into position and they can get receivers open that way. So for me, I like to just stay on balanced uh, based off the fact that I do try to mix in man and zone every once in a while. And I really don't want... Um, you know, that type of issue to happen. I'd rather if my opponent flips the entire play that my defense is already set up and they don't try to match, which like I said, they typically do more if you choose one of these overall speed or height matches. But like I said, situationally, you can always go to these if you're having a receiver that's giving you trouble. Obviously, if somebody, you know, Devontae Adams is running around beating you up, you're going to want to match Darius Slay to him or whoever your best cornerback is to try to stop that. But this is not something I set at the beginning of a game. When it comes to option defense, nothing's really changed here. You're going to want to set this to conservative or every single time your opponent runs a read option, he's going to have the quarterback just running butt naked down the sidelines. That's typically how it works. You want to have that edge defender to try to force that quarterback inside uh, every single time. The run on a, on a a read option isn't always that good so i mean it's it's just like your basic inside zone so obviously that's not going to be as big of a concern but the quarterback getting outside where there's nobody trying to hold him back that's a huge concern so always leave option defense to conservative next up we have strip ball and tackling which are basically the same thing uh, if you put tackling to aggressive you're going to get uh, more broken tackles and if you put strip ball to, to aggressive you're going to have a lot of face mask penalties so i find it's best to go conservative on strip ball or to just go back Balance, but you really don't get any benefit or any penalty. But if you go conservative, you're going to have lower chances of broken tackles. Only your opponent, only your AI won't try to, to strip the ball, which is fine. They don't really strip the ball much anyway. So I'd rather increase their chances of making secure tackles on every play, which to me is probably one of the bigger benefits when it comes to coaching adjustments. And when it comes to tackling, I want to go conservative. They won't allow uh, much yards after contact, which is definitely a good way to go. So to me, it's probably better to go conservative on both. But if you want to try to balance it out and still get some hit stick fumbles from your computer, you can go aggressive because it does say it, higher, it has a higher chance of broken tackles and fake outs. But since I already reduced that on strip ball, then you're already kind of you know balancing that out because I already have a lower chance of broken tackles here. So to have a higher chance of broken tackles from this one kind of feels like you're you're, you're uh, you know even it out. You're kind of canceling each other out. So for me though, I definitely go conservative on both. I don't want anybody carrying my my uh, defenders for extra yards. Now when I get to the bottom here, obviously a lot of people always ask, what are your zone drop flats? What are the best zone drop flats? I leave these all to default. These to me are situational once again, and that's because I mostly run matching coverages, whether it's gonna be a cover three or a cover four. Although I personally feel that cover four quarters is pretty broken, so I don't really run that too much. But cover three match to me is one of the best defenses in the game, and I'll show you guys why. If I pick an offensive play here, I will find something that attacks the seam, something like a verticals route here. 
Verticals typically beats cover three regular very easily. So let's go and let's pick that. Cover three regular, by the way, you can access that just by hitting Y or triangle and up on the right stick to play over the top coverage. And now that, that seam flat turns into a curl flat, which is gonna be your traditional cover three defense. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I'm pretty sure Dak will diagnose. I'll probably have to use her, uh, the tight end here, so I didn't throw to that. But a lot of times as we get the sack, like I said, I love this, this blitz, that's probably why. But let's go to the replay here. And let's see that, you know, typical cover three, when you have three wide, when you have a, a, a trio like this, this guy here will typically get open right up the seam. And that's exactly what happens here because we have, we change it to a regular stock cover three by turning this into a curl flat. This route right here will always get open against a regular cover three right up the seam. And that's why I don't like this style of defense. Even if I set my zone drops, it's not gonna change that. If I set this to 30, five, it doesn't matter. It's still gonna get open up the seam because he's prioritizing outside. He's prioritizing the area where you would essentially have, uh, you know, your out or your corner routes. So if I go ahead and I go back and I leave it alone, just to, just to show you guys what happens when I leave the matching principles on, that seam flat's gonna match that, that seam every single time and take that away. I gotta cover you know, these crossing routes, but you can see nothing gets open and we get another sack. And that's because this is a cover three concept, only this time the seam flat man matched that seam and nothing's open. This is exactly why I run this play because this is designed to take away these type of plays. This is a specific cover three play and since I ran the right cover three, nothing got open. I find these even more useless this year based off the fact that your opponent has the ability to custom stem routes past these points. I mean, I could set these to 30 and my opponent could custom stem their corner route to 40. It doesn't really matter. So to me, these are definitely less useful and it's better to use matching principles based off the fact that these uh, matching principles will essentially man match and cover these routes to the greatest depth. So let's say that your opponent sets their, their flat, their curl flat depth to five, uh, 15, 20. It really doesn't matter. Pick your depth. A lot of people do 15, a lot of people do 20, 25. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna do 15 and then we're just gonna pick uh, cover, we're gonna pick cover three seam throughout the entire experiment because uh, this is a matching play, but if you put your zone drop depth to a certain depth, it's gonna override the matching principles anyway. So there's a couple different things I could do here. I'm gonna do the same concept where I streak somebody and then the corner route should get open underneath the streak. Uh, at this depth, this is perfect. If you guess perfectly like this, uh, like this 15, uh, you know, depth is guessing here, you're gonna see how that's gonna, it's gonna cut that off. It's gonna play that very well, even though I still kind of mossed it. Uh, but you can see it played it perfectly. It played the 15 yard depth exactly how you want it to. But what if your opponent uses the custom stem system, whether your custom stems it all the way up or custom stems it all the way down, that zone drop is going to be useless. If I go all the way to zero, which is something that a lot of people do, you're gonna see how that cornerback is not gonna be able to cover that and we're still gonna get wide open based off the fact that, um, you know, that's basically how we set the defense up, right? You set to 15, he's gonna drop to 15. Same thing can work over the top. If I, if I wanna hit a one play touchdown here, I could drop that guy or, you know, say I'm trying to score, say it's third and long. I could set this guy to a point where he's going back way further than that drop will allow. And you'll see how we'll have the exact same success once this guy breaks out here. Although you can see, I mean, we didn't catch the ball, but once again, it was he was open right over the top. Now, if we leave that to just regular match, if we don't touch anything, if we go back and we reset our zone drops just to zero at default, and we leave the cover three seam on, we're gonna see a different result. And now you're gonna see that it doesn't matter. Even if I take this route all the way to zero, this cornerback is gonna cover that as we wait for this tight end to do his little motion thing here. But this cornerback is gonna be all over that no matter what the depth is. As you can see here, he knocks the ball away. We can't make the play. Even if I wanna move that all the way back to 30, it doesn't matter. This is the same depth that I was using before. That cornerback is gonna cover the entire way. As you can see, he's all over that, all the way up the seam and makes another play on the ball. And that's why I'm telling you guys to leave these zone drops to default because the custom stem system is a natural counter now and really has much more of an advantage on offense than the defense can create by trying to guess what the depth of the route's going to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there. If you guys wanna see more tip videos, I'll have them popping up on screen. So just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just wanna show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.